Hello, hello, and welcome to One Place Guide to Mission Chief, a no do that straight to action emergency response simulator. Your task is to oversee an emergency system of an entire city with all the fire stations, hospitals, and educational centers for the professionals that carry out those tasks. And it ain't an easy one, but we've got your back. In this video, we'll show you how to set yourself for success in this game, climb the ranks faster, and walk you through the game's interface. Let's go! Alright, so here we are in the game. Um, granted, this may not be the most visually impressive title, but then again, I don't really think that the actual emergency response interfaces look super spectacular. But hey, if you're actually working in the field, comment below. Let us know how this really works, if this is truly as close as possible to the actual working conditions um, as an operator or, you know, a fire station chief. That's, for me at least, that will be pretty interesting to know. Okay then. Basically, what you do first is that you can choose any, literally any place on the world's map and set up your emergency system there. To do that, we first need to set up a new building. There will also be a tutorial at the very beginning. So if you follow this tutorial, you will also be fine. You will kind of get the basic concept of how this whole thing works, but we just want to go a little bit deeper into useful features in here. But let's let's get this over with. Um, we can choose any place on Earth, so how about, I don't know, maybe Tokyo? Um, no, you know what? I've never been to Marseille, France, and yeah. I know that it's nothing like the comedy movies about the taxi driver and his best bud policeman. But um, let's see if I can um, get close to that. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to set a fire station near water. So let's just let's just go with this. Okay. So once you, uh, once you choose to build a new facility, you will first need to choose the type. And despite the kind of all of the ads and everything, yes, there will mostly be fires, at least according to my experience, but you are taking care of, you know, the entire emergency response system. We're talking about uh, home response, staging area, hospitals and whatnot. By the way, the names in this list and specializations and whatnot, they are vastly dependent on kind of the region of the country that you choose in the beginning. I'm playing on the UK server, so this means that all of the names for all these emergency response services will be specific to UK. If you're playing on a different server, it may not only be the language that is different, but the naming itself. Um, but I'm pretty sure that kind of the essentials here are the same. So there's a fire, there's a police, there's uh, the um, medical assistance part, and plus the educational part for your personnel, no matter where they work. Those are basically like those four major tiers. Um, let's start with a small fire station. This is what I recommend, uh, going small at first, because those are cheaper, those are a very good kind of a starter's exercise, plus it's not like you will have emergencies all over the city anyway, so it makes sense to, you know, get those small locations, give them a couple of vehicles, slightly more personnel, um, and develop in that direction rather than creating, you know, full-fledged facilities in different ends of the city from the very beginning. Eventually you will have to do that, but uh, at the very start, this would not be the strategy that I go for. So let's build a small fire station. Uh, 
FS001? Uh, yeah, sure. Water ladder or light for a pump. Uh, let's go with the water ladder. It's a universal thing. Uh, you can either buy uh, pay by credits, you will have a certain amount of 100k, I believe, or by coins. Uh, coins are pretty rare, and we'll dive into that a little bit later on. All right, now we have our first facility, and you can see it on the map. Not long after, we we're supposed to receive uh, the first emergency kind of. Note that we're already at 100 credits. So what do you do with those? That's a brilliant question. You can actually spend those to promote yourself. This is where you get to your personal menu. The interface in this game is not super intuitive. So to get access to this, you will have to go to the buildings themselves first. But this is super useful. and. Uh, let's just go over all of these things because I'm pretty sure that you will find those helpful on your way to the fire chief rank with millions of credits and you know dozens of stories to tell about the super difficult requests or like emergency calls that you handled. Your profile profile is uh, well profile itself is nothing special really it's basically like data about you and your wars and whatnot so this tasks and events are is like um, an in-game stimulating mechanic in a way where you perform all kind of quests in exchange for coins or credits right now it's joining an alliance and it's the only one available for the beginners uh, you can join one, but I wouldn't rush into it because first it's really like it's really important that you get the hang of the game and all of its mechanics to uh, be very efficient in your alliance. Let's see current rank. Ranks depend on the amount of credits that you have that you've earned for performing the task, responding to calls. Your performance during those responses uh, is what defines how many credits you get. So the better you do, the faster you respond to a call, the faster the vehicle gets to the, to the site, the more you get. Right now we started with at Proby, we built our first building, and that's it. We are already uh, we earned 1,000 credits. Note that your current balance in the beginning does not kind of, it has no influence over your rank. So it's not like you can start at the fire apparatus operator right away. No, you have to earn those. Right now we earned 1,000 by building the first fire station. And this is how we get promoted. And we're already making progress progress towards senior firefighter so don't forget to check on on that because every time you rank up you also get some coins that are super valuable uh, next is awards for performing all kinds of tasks in the game um, could be special stuff you know, like seasonal missions, special events, kind of that. There uh, are also social interactions that are rewarded. The fastest, the longest, um, all kinds of things. And they're pretty achievable, they're not impossible. So be sure to do that. Then there's graphic packs. Uh, you will already notice that Mission Chief is not really the most visually diverse game but luckily the enthusiasts from the community create um, graphic packs for your vehicles and whatnot so you can just use any of those they're nice they're animated and you will see them moving on your map uh, as your vehicle makes progress towards uh, the site and you can use those it's nothing super useful but you know it's a nice cosmetic feature feature 
Next there are notes. As I mentioned, the interface of this game is not super intuitive. And if you forget anything, right, you can just type a note here, save it, um, and that way you will remember where is this feature, where is that, those kind of things. Finally, there are two super useful things that I want to highlight here. First, it's mission speed. Uh, at the very beginning, when you only have like, a couple of facilities, there isn't really a lot of capacity to respond to missions, and there won't be a lot of those spawning either across the city. So I would recommend maybe turning it up, because that way you'll be able to earn credits much faster. Um, but later on, this may, this may get a little bit out of hand, so please, you know, kind of uh, use this feature to find the pace that is the most comfortable for you and uh, make use of it, you know, whenever you have time and you want to clear as many missions as possible, just increase it, but make sure you have enough vehicles and, um, and personnel, of course with necessary training because some of the missions are not as simple as it might be. They have special requirements like um, that the personnel has received a critical care training, something like that. So finally, the alarm and response regulations. You will only need it at a later stage of the game when missions get more complicated. For example, when you need several fire tracks, uh, fire trucks, ambulances, and a police car on site and those people need to have special training something like that but when you do that manually this might take precious time and this thing here is kind of like an automation rule so if you see a mission um, this alarm and response regulation will pop up and you can just choose it this will automatically kind of pick up the vehicles and the personnel if they're free to send it straight to this mission. I'll, tell you, uh, I'll show you how it works. So you can name it. Um, I would recommend naming each set uh, by the vehicles that you put in there. So let's see, I don't know, uh, one uh, fire engine, one pump, two ambulances. The color itself doesn't matter. Let's just go with this one. Um, number two those things are not really as important but um, it also helps to kind of use the color code to orient yourself aha this is this ARR uh, automation response regulation category this could be general can be specific to a particular task uh, right let's oh, let's go with a general one if you choose the stations that sort of participate um, in here in this regulation or if you just leave it blank then the regulation will automatically pull vehicles from all of the available stations if you're playing on um, on a computer because you can play a web, web version you can also set up a hotkey for this but um, it's, uh, it's okay not to. And then you basically just choose the available vehicles plus special training personnel to go um, and respond to a particular kind of a mission, a request that will require this, this set of skills and, um, and you know manpower. So we had one fire engine one rescue pump, um, we don't really need, and two, two ambulances, right? Yes. And that's pretty much it. Now we save it, and whenever we think that a mission requires this kind of a set, and we'll also see um, in the mission itself what is needed to complete it successfully, then we can just choose this ARR and go for it.
Okay, we, see, we already have our first missions. Um, that is brilliant. And we can now send our water ladder. Get to dispatch. And then we can see it moving in the map. So as soon as you dispatch a vehicle to respond to a call, the status uh, changes to yellow. And you'll later on see that this progress bar kind of depletes as the issue is being resolved by your response team. While they're at it, let's add a couple more, more buildings because here, for example, release of a person. We don't have any vehicles available. Um, this is also the work for firemen. Um, but it's not that every situation requires a fireman, right? So what we can do is to add a new type of a building. You can also set a point of interest like a mall or school or something like that. They will basically trigger special missions, maybe more difficult, more challenging, but also more rewarding. It's, it's kind of like a special scenario spot. I would not recommend doing that in the very beginning. You know, train your personnel first, get a more diverse response system, and then get down to it. So let's build a building. Um, here, choose this position, and I want to build a small ambulance station. So we call this AMB001. Um, yeah, let's build it. Perfect. Now we can respond to medical calls, but it's really like. This isn't worth much if we do not train our fox, right? And I found it that the most useful kind of um, educational facility is this one, Rescue EMS Academy, uh, for, the for the beginning at least. And it's going to be Academy 001. You don't have enough credits. You can also build it for coins. You can buy those, as you can see. You get those when leveling up. Plus, if you recommend the game, every time a friend that signed up through you gets a new rank, you will also get two coins. Um, you can also get those in the daily login rewards. They're here. So if you log in for seven consecutive days, you're logging daily. So don't forget to build the station. Right now. Yeah, see? So we will need roughly four minutes to put out the fire. But that's only because we have just one vehicle, right? This is a this isn't serious. But it can only host one vehicle for now and we will simply upgrade it to have more space this is already a point at which we um, we need to have ready to a bigger fire station so let's just wait for a day so see, instead of building um, an additional fire station, we can just expand this one and save a, a little bit more space in the turf. But feel free to go with a big one, you know, straight off the bat. This, um, this could also be a good decision. However, if uh, you feel like exploring things at the very beginning, um, I would still go with the small stuff. Finally, we can uh, have a small police station. Uh, 
And that's it. Police station has incident response vehicle. And we only have two employees. So how about we hire some more. You can recruit them instantly or, you know, post an ad and hope that somebody turns up. And that's pretty much it. This is how you get new people. This is how you get new vehicles. I'll remind you by upgrading the building first in here. And then you can go to vehicle market and get more stuff. Um, well, let's say more uh, cars that are pertaining to a particular that are better suited for a particular kinds of missions. That was our rundown of Mission Chief. Hope you'll enjoy the game. Join our Wombat Gamers Discord server and be on the lookout for more guides and let's plays. And check back on Wombplay for more games and more free crypto. Which game do you think will go live on Wombplay next? Write in the comments below and stay playing and slaying. Ciao!